Hey everyone, welcome back to Brian's Mysteries and Adventures on Trail. I hope everyone is having a great weekend or whenever you happen to watch this video. Today we are going to be talking about arguably one of the biggest missing persons mysteries in the mid-Atlantic region. This young couple in their 30s, they were on a date out in the South Street area of Philadelphia which was very familiar to them. It was a common area for them to visit. They both left in Richard's truck and vanished into the night and have never been seen since. We're going to be talking about the disappearance of Richard Patron and Danielle Imbo. This case takes us all the way back to February 19th of 2005 when Imbo and Patron were at a bar called Abilene's Bar. Unfortunately, it is not there anymore. However, I'm going to show you maps and locations. It's in the South Street area of Philadelphia. At least that's where it was at the time. The reports at the time say that on that particular evening, they met up with another couple. They had a few drinks like they normally would. After leaving the bar, they got into Richard's black 2001 Dodge Dakota pickup truck, which I'm going to have various pictures of. And that was it. They disappeared into the night into Philadelphia. I'm going to give you the basic facts and then we'll go into more details, but basically since that night, no calls, no activity on any of their bank accounts, no sign of the truck, nothing has been seen for more than a decade. Now this is a picture of his actual truck, the one that they left in that night. Three years after this disappearance, the FBI made an announcement about the case. It was very disconcerting to a lot of people. According to NJ.com, the agents were no longer treating this as a simple missing persons investigations. In fact, it was now being handled as a quote-unquote murder for hire situation. Both this young couple, each on their own, had kids with other partners. They had just recently started dating. When this case first first started, the families were working together, they were strong, they wanted to find answers. Unfortunately, as we'll talk about later, that did not hold up. At the time, everybody couldn't understand who would want to harm these two. If the FBI or any local investigators know or have any inf more information, they have not reported it. It was also noteworthy to say that Crime Feed reached out to uh, the Philadelphia Division of the FBI. Special Agent William F. Sweeney Jr. said, quote, last year around the 10th anniversary of their disappearances, we did receive some promising leads, which we will continue to follow up on. This case remains very active and we will keep pushing. There's a sense of closure that both families need and the victim deserves justice, end quote. According to reports from ABC6, the FBI believes not only was this a professional hit, but it's likely that more than one person was involved. Chris Zajek with the FBI said in 2015 in various news reports that this didn't just happen. We feel this was an orchestrated act at 3,000 pound truck and two people don't just simply disappear into the night. End quote. Let's go back to the actual night of February 15th of 2005 when this all happened. The couple was at a their bar called the Abilene, which is, this is a picture of the street where it was on. Unfortunately, I don't have a picture of the actual bar because it's no longer there. They were playing live music. Danielle was very much into live music. She was in a band herself. This was something that was very normal. According to an interview during a week after, one of her friends said that she had told her that she actually just wanted some time alone. She didn't want to be with her boyfriend, Richard Patron, or her ex at the same time, a man named Joseph. She just wanted to have some time on her own, try and figure things out. This is a quote by her friend, Dawn. Danielle had been living in the town of Mount Laurel, New Jersey. I'll have maps up and some more descriptions. We'll go over this more. Her ex, Joseph Imbo, he did take a lie detector and passed it. The police thoroughly investigated him. They did not believe he was a suspect, but kept them on, kept him on their radar. Excuse me. 
I'm going to have various newspaper articles throughout this video to show you the various research and different information. The FBI immediately got involved and had their own investigation, as well as state investigators from the states of Pennsylvania and New Jersey. Because this possibly and most likely crossed state lines, the FBI had gotten involved. It is just an absolutely bizarre mystery that I have gone through dozens and dozens of articles and I still can't figure out any information that would make sense of what could have possibly happened to them. Eventually, billboards and posters were put up all around Philadelphia and various areas. Both the families were working very hard together to try and figure out what had happened. Now, here's a map of Philadelphia. The police came to the idea that she possibly might have been or he or both of them possibly could have gone into the Delaware River. This is a picture of the Delaware River in the area. Now, of course, the Delaware River goes all the way up through the area and separates New Jersey and Pennsylvania. Here's another picture from another portion of the Delaware River. I bring this up because they brought in special dive teams to search the Delaware River. At the time, since it was winter, the average temperature was well below 20 degrees. These divers went out for several days diving in several areas of the Delaware River. Here's another picture of the, the river. You can see how big it is. They were looking for the truck and, of course, any possible remains. Ironically, they did not find his truck. They did, however, find several submerged vehicles that were in the Delaware River at that area, which they pulled up. But they ultimately had no relevance to this case or investigation. The family was both relieved and also frustrated because they just had no idea what could have happened to their loved ones. To give you some more details, this couple left the bar at around 11.45 p.m., which is around 429 South Street on February 19th of 2005. They left in this truck, as we've discussed. Everything seemed five. They weren't intoxicated or inebriated. They knew the area. Everything didn't make any sense. Her family and his family, they immediately started getting entrenched in their positions. This is a map from Philadelphia to Mount Laurel, New Jersey, just to give you an idea of the distance. They were in a black over silver 2001 Dodge Dakota pickup with a Pennsylvania license plate YFH2319. At one point, a tip was called in that the couple had been killed and was somewhere in the Pine Barrens. These are pictures of the Pine Barrens of New Jersey. Having grown up myself in New Jersey till I was roughly 13 years old, the Pine Barrens were always a scary place. They were always sort of told to us at camp that it was a place you never wanted to go to. Bad things happened there. This is another picture of the Pine Barrens and some of the roads going in and out of the area. It's just a very spooky place, in my opinion. It is not that far from the location of Philadelphia where they were last seen. Also passes through Mount Laurel County or Township, excuse me, if you were going through to get to the Pine Barrens. These are pictures of the roads heading that way. On Danielle's side of the family, her family members, her friends, they kept getting calls, getting tips from psychics and other people saying that she was in trouble, her body, or she was at a train station or train loading area where there were a bunch of boxcars. Her friends and family went out to look, even though they had contacted the police, told them that this was what they were doing. The police told them that this was an absolutely crazy idea. They should not go out and look. They did it anyway. The police ended up showing up, taking them back to the headquarters and telling them this is not something that you can do. You need to leave it to the authorities. That search turned up nothing anyway. Sadly, as time went on, unfortunately, the worst possible thing could have happened other than the fact that this couple had disappeared. The families were originally working together. They were helping each other with everything possible, but at some point they started to have differences. They started actually blaming one another, feeling that the other family was hiding something, 
blaming Richard or blaming Danielle. Maybe one of their friends had something to do with it, or maybe somehow like one of them was responsible. It went from cooperation to just a complete breakdown in families working together to try and bring back their loved ones, which as you can imagine, just could not be worse. I mean, I can't imagine what these families went through and are still going through. As I said earlier in the video, both Richard Patron and Daniel Imbo have children, and that's probably one of the worst parts about this case. Their children have now been growing up without any idea of what happened to their parents, plus having to read all the various different news articles and different people with different theories and also now being questioned. This was a lovely young couple that had known each other in the past, but after they had broken off with their other significant others, they just hit it off and were, were doing great. And they just were out on the town for an evening out, which was very common for them. How does a couple young couple like this in a Dodge truck just disappear from the face of the earth. The police thought that since there are a lot of chop shops, or there were at the time a lot of chop shops in Philadelphia, they were perhaps targeted in their vehicle and it was something as simple as a carjacking. However, over time this theory seemed to lose credibility because these cases, when that happens, usually somebody comes forward, the chop shop is found, people turn state's evidence. This case is now almost two decades old and we still have no answers than when we did when it first happened. The saddest thing in this case, like I said, aside from the fact that we have not been able to find them, but is the disconnect that the families now they're at odds with each other it's almost like the war of the roses here is a map of various search areas where they searched i put x's in a line along the river of the delaware river and again this is one of the roads that leads out from philadelphia to the township that she was living in at the time or she was very familiar with here is another map of the various areas i highlighted the Mount Laurel area in red there. You can see how close it is and then the dotted line there is the Delaware River. As you can see though, you know, along this road there's a lot of high pines and woods and it's just a very, like I said, spooky area. They have done lots of things over the years. Her band that she had reunited to do work to try and raise money to go out for more searches. Unfortunately, they both remain missing to this day. I want to dedicate this video to both Richard Patron and Danielle Imbo and both of their families. I hope that you can come together again and work together to try and figure out what happened to your loved ones. And I pray and hope that you will find what happened to them and get that closure that you so need my thoughts and prayers go out to you and all of their loved ones i want to thank you all for watching as always i want to thank you for all your support all your comments i do try and reach out and respond to as many comments as i can special thank you to co.ag for providing the background music hopefully i will see you all in the next one take care Hey everyone, thanks for sticking with me to the end. I really appreciate it. I hope everyone is doing well. I just wanted to run something by you. I have no problem with you guys critiquing my videos, my voice, my content. I look forward to trying to improve. But I received this comment the other day and it is the first comment that I've read that has actually really upset me. This person said that they unsubscribed because they were tired of YouTubers being lazy and not putting in enough maps or doing real research, which to me just really upset me because all these videos, whether it shows or not, I spend hours and hours and hours researching all the photos, getting photos from the actual areas, maps from the actual areas, sometimes the actual SAR reports or recordings. I know the majority of you know that, but I am always welcome to critiques and trying to improve. But one thing I am not welcome to is somebody calling me lazy. I'm sorry, that's just unacceptable. 
And I know most of you don't think that, but I just wanted to say I appreciate all of you that always are supportive and that do critique me and give me feedback so that I can improve in ways that I can. And I always look forward to that. If you have any comments or suggestions for calendar picks, please submit them. I'll have that all in the description as always. For those of you that may be new to the channel or unaware, I always have a complete list of my sources as well as photo credits in the description so that you can do more reading. And if you want, you can always reach out to me, my email, all that information is always in the description. For those of you that may want to donate to the channel, I would really appreciate it. To date, I've never done any sponsorships or anything like that. So I really do rely on you guys and your support and I really do appreciate it. All that information is in the description as well. If you have any case suggestions or anything else, please leave me a comment that just makes my day and I thank you so much. I have drawn the coin winner for this coin. It's a member by the name of TN Cat Lover 33. So please email me to my email address in the description for the address that you'd like the coin to be sent. If you, however, don't want the coin, if you're not interested in it, please let me know so I can pick the next winner. Again, it's TNCatLover33. I'll see you guys next time.